Spoiler alert, the IRIX 45mm T1.5 Cine lens has impressively solid optical performance, it's built like a weather sealed tank and it looks so good. If you're looking to get into a set of really quality full frame Cine primes that really don't break the bank, this is going to be absolutely one of the best choices on the market. So let's get into it. Hey what's up, I'm Scott and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, thank you for watching. We do all kinds of test tutorials, reviews, anything photo and video related. So if you like today's content, please do consider hitting that subscribe button under the video and make sure to turn on the bell icon to get notifications when new content is uploaded. So jumping right into it, the 45mm T1.5 is a full frame cine lens from a line of cine lenses that IRIX is still expanding. The 45mm which I have here is just over $1300 which for a cine lens that covers full frame and has impressive optical quality is not much at all. But if you don't need all of those extra little cine features which we will talk about in just a moment, they do also have a photo version for just about $800 where you can save a little bit of money. As a cine lens, one of the first things that you'll notice physically speaking about this lens is that of course it does have those geared aperture and focus rings and those gears across their cine line of lenses do line up physically speaking so if you're swapping lenses you won't have to adjust the placement of things like your follow focus. The physical length of the lenses across the line are not identical but they are very similar as is their weight. This one coming in at just over a kilogram and all of the lenses do have 95mm front diameters for matte boxes. The 45mm does also have 86mm front filter threads so if you prefer to use screw on uh, lens filters you can still go that route. And there is also a lens hood which you can see here if you want some protection but don't want to use a matte box. While we are talking about that lens hood though, it is a slip on magnetic design. I don't love it and please don't pick the lens up by its lens hood, but I do get why they did it this way. It's a small detail, but other people don't seem to have talked about this. If they went with a traditional twist on lens cap here, then you wouldn't have the flat barrel design which works so well with slip on matte boxes. And if they used a screw on type, then that would take up those filter threads, meaning that you aren't able to use screw on filters when you're also using the lens hood, which is no good. Technically, as a solution to both of those problems, a slip on magnetic lens hood is not a bad idea. Still, it's not my favorite part of the lens. Anyway, you get multiple mounts available with this lens, including EF, which I have right here. You get PL, which is great with larger cinema cameras, and even a Micro Four Thirds mount for mounting it natively on Micro Four Thirds cameras, even though this is a full frame lens. That really helps to make this a very versatile lens that can feel right at home anywhere from on small Micro Four Thirds cameras up to larger cine cams. It's actually also weather sealed, which is something that you really don't see on a lot of even more expensive cine lenses, never mind ones in this price range. Of course, it's an entirely internal focusing design. There's a removable lens foot which can actually go on the bottom or the top of the lens depending on what works best with your particular rig. And there's very clear markings on the barrel of the lens which come in either metric or the other one. Those markings are visible on both sides of the lens, easy to see for either the camera operator or for the focus puller, not on the top like you get with photo lenses, and they're actually engraved into the barrel and filled with UV paint, making them very easy to see. The nine-bladed aperture gives you very, very nice bokeh, and the out-of-focus area looks very, very smooth, not distracting, and the transition between in-focus and out-of-focus also looks fantastic. Of course, both the D-clicked aperture ring and the focus ring have very, very nice feels to them. They're very smooth and they have just enough heaviness or resistance to feel really good and uh, confident when you're making your focus pulls. The focus ring also has a nice and long 180 degree throw from minimum focus to infinity focus. And of course it has hard stops, so you're able to get nice precise control. That 180 degree focus throw is kind of a good balance where it is still a little bit difficult to get longer focus throws by hand, but for reasonable focus throws, still it's very easy to use by hand. However, this feels really great with a follow focus system. The gears on this lens though are actually very low profile, kind of carved into the body of the lens instead of sticking out from it. To solve any problems that this design might cause with the gears of your follow focus actually hitting the barrel of the lens, they designed a rotatable ring with a cutout that you can position wherever your follow focus is to leave space 
for those gears so you don't run into any problems. It's a small touch, but it really, really does help to give this lens a very nice, sleek, and streamlined look without sacrificing any of the functionality. So optically speaking, of course, like I said, this lens does very well. Even wide open at T1.5 at minimum focus of 0.4 meters, it resolves details like eyelashes and hairs very, very well. They say it's full frame 8K ready and I don't have an 8K camera, but shooting 6K with it, the image looked very, very sharp and overall, I love the way it looks. I did shoot a paid job uh, from start to finish using only this lens and it worked flawlessly. Uh, I didn't hesitate to shoot wide open. It was very sharp. The overall look was great and the client was very, very pleased. Unfortunately, I can't show that footage because of an agreement with the client, but as soon as all this COVID-19 stuff clears up, I do plan to shoot some sort of you know, mini documentary or, or a small project with this lens for the purpose of showing it to you guys. So I will update that on my YouTube channel when it's ready. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so to make sure that you get a notification when I do upload that, hopefully sooner than later. Anyway, for now, like I said, I haven't had any problems so far shooting this wide open, including uh, no really uh, troublesome vignetting. Uh, and the chromatic aberration performance in real life has been really, really great. I haven't really been able to find any uh, shooting real life subjects. If I'm shooting black and white text, you can see a little bit, but it's a very impressive performance. In terms of focus breathing, um, it's not zero. Uh, there is some focus breathing, but I think that it's pretty reasonable uh, in either average or better than average for what you'd expect from a cine lens in this price bracket, especially something that you know performs so well otherwise. This lens does show some flare, um, but it's not really distracting. I found it artistically to look very nice. And when the sun is in the frame, for example, the lens does seem to drop in contrast a bit. But again, artistically speaking, I really like the way that it looked. It's not distracting and it has a very cinematic look, you know, and people hate the use of that word, but it does have a very cinematic look to it. So uh, if you don't want that, use a matte box, use the lens hood, for example, to help with it. Now, I'm not going to shoot test charts or anything like that. It's just not me. Again, this lens has been very, very sharp in real life performance and uh, overall very, very strong but uh, I am very interested to see hopefully I can get my hands on more of the lenses in this cine lineup from irix and I'm really curious to see how they uh, fare in terms of consistency across the line color consistency uh, light transmission consistency and things like that and for me I think that's going to be a lot more important as a new line of cine lenses Anyway, in the meantime, a bright T1.5 45 millimeter full frame lens with weather sealing like this is gonna be my bread and butter. I'd really love to see like a 24 millimeter and a 85 or something around that range to really fill up the holes in this lineup, which is still developing from Irix, but this lens has got me very excited for the other lenses that do already exist and those soon to come. Even if I ignored all of the cine lens design aspects of this, I think it's very, very deserving of the $1,300 price tag. That's an incredible value for a lens with all of the features and the optical performance that this has. And I just don't think that you can really find another lens priced like that that really competes. If you get this in your hands, you'll know that it's an amazingly premium feeling lens. But again, that price tag is not a premium price tag. And if, again, it's too much for you and you don't need all those little cine lens extras, you can save a few hundred dollars by going with the photo version without sacrificing optical quality or build quality. The bottom line for me is that it feels great. I have no hesitation shooting it wide open and I've just loved, loved the shooting with it. But for now, that's enough rambling. If you like this video or found it helpful, please do consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching.